uh, a sect called scribes and Pharisees. That was back 2,000 years ago. Ain't right. no scribes and Pharisees, man. A scribe is somebody that that writes. Pharisees are a sect of of, of uh, Israelites back going back a couple thousand years ago, man. Yeah. So, so how, what are you talking about, man? And not all of them were wicked. You had well, they don't know that. <laughs> they don't know that because they don't yeah. study. Yeah. Okay. You had righteous Pharisees. You had righteous scribes. Uh, Gamaliel, who taught Paul, was a righteous Pharisee. Yeah, Baruch, well, Baruch was a for Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, read on. It says, uh, 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 "Decorate, color, beautify." All right. And that's the, you can't tell me that's not Nate. That's you all the way. Then as you read on, it says, "A nave." He should beautify that church. Yeah. He's trying. Like to. I said, it looks it looks like a chop shop, man. Yeah, you're trying. You're trying to beautify it. Even, even the guy who who interviewed you, he, he, he man, he made mockery. All you did was you took a base, a basement, under a lot, whatever you call it, a basement garage, and you and you put some, uh, <laughs> you put some uh, sheetrock up and do right. some pictures up, man. That's right. You know. Yeah. This is the book of Ecclesiastes 26 and 29. A merchant shall hardly keep himself from doing wrong, and a huckster shall not be freed from sin. Now, I looked up that word, a huckster, you know, because in the margin I got a, a con man, a peddler. All right, so when I look up the word huckster in a free dictionary, it says one who sells wares or provisions in the street, a peddler or a hawker, one who uses aggressive showy and sometimes devious methods to promote or sell a product and that's you nate uh informal uh one who writes advertising copy uh especially well that the, the uh definition number two that's you nate one who uses aggressive showy and sometimes devious methods to promote or sell a product and that's what you're doing man you're you're basically a huckster a you pimp. know and you're basically pimping these people yeah pimp you know and they, they don't know, and, the, and that, that clown, the Haitian asshole, you know, he, he uh, um, because the brother was frustrating you. That's why you, you, when he's meant, well, I don't know if it was that brother that mentioned Elder Tahar's name, or you said it, oh, Taha, Taha's a nigger, and the JMS the niggas. You know why you were saying that? Because you were getting frustrated because the brother was coming directly at you. That's and right. he wasn't coming at you in, in a devious way, he was coming at you in sincerity. Yeah. You know, you could see the man was there, you know, sincerely asking you the questions, and you couldn't come with the answers. You know, and then when when he kept uh, uh, pressing pressing you on certain things and cornering you on certain things, that's when you came out with that bullshit. Yeah, with that uh, what they call that that ad hominem attack. Yep. Yeah, tell us a nigga, a nigga, a nigga. You know? you can't even say the word oh, nigga. So um, yeah, this is an excerpt from the Vice magazine um, article that was done on Nate, and it's talking about your school. It says. Let me just read this. It says, however, my guide, who identified himself as Deacon Asaph, didn't bother to pat me down. Right. Now, now, why didn't you pat down? The, why didn't you pat down the white man? <laughs> yeah, the the the, the uh, placard said. Then they say um, that yeah. you could be subject to being frisked. Yeah. Wait a minute. Isn't he the devil? You mean to tell me you didn't bother to pat down the devil? Anyway, uh, it says the Israelites had done their best to convert the subterranean room with his exposed pipe and electrical wiring into a place of worship. Uh, they had placed an elevated altar. Ain't nothing but a homeless, <laughs> a homeless, cat a homeless catacomb that they spruced up. <laughs> hey, what's that? Uh, what's that? That's a nerve calling us bums, man. Yeah. Thank you. But that ain't nothing but a what do you call a sub subterranean subterranean lair. room, a uh. subterranean den of iniquity. <laughs> hey, what's what's the name of that company? OSHA. You better you better hope OSHA don't come in there and uh, see that uh, exposed uh, uh, wiring. And well, the exposed pipe may be okay, but the exposed wiring, you better hope OSHA don't come and pay you a visit, give you a nice fat fine. You know, talking about your progress. What about, isn't that what Deacon Asaph said? We, when you see the progress, well, I'm reading about the progress right now. <laughs> the Israelites had done their best to convert. They're making mockery of you guys, man. That's why they wanted Sufi's magazine. Yeah. 
And if you go try to sue him, you ain't gonna get nothing. Cause he he called it as he seen it, man. He, he looked at you. He, he said, it. "This guy came off looking like a con man." Yeah, you'll just make that pit worse for yourself. You just you should just go in the corner. Hey, somewhere your little it. kingdom is is crumbling, it's crumbling man. man. Okay, it's crumbling. Your your, your ice cream castle is <laughs> <laughs> melting. Uh, the Israelites had done their best to convert the subterranean room. With his, <laughs> I like that. So I like that subterranean room with his exposed pipe and electrical wiring into a place of worship. That's a, a fire hazard, by the way, Nate. Ele- exposed electrical wiring. What if one of those wires get cut? Then you have a, a live wire hanging, and then you got little children up in there, Nate. Oh boy, <laughs> it, it, the plot thickens for you, Nate. Uh, they had placed an elevated altar under the basement windows and hung a portrait of a pissed off red eyed Jesus on the wall he gl- <laughs> he glowered at me as As- Asaph and I chatted uh, that's pretty much it anyway we're gonna go into this uh um what you may call it we're gonna go into this uh thing and we're gonna dissect it okay Uh, come back to me. Speak for a minute. Let me get this set up. Oh, if I may. Yeah, and I'm looking at the picture, and you brothers will see the picture. Man, they got, they got, look, we do, Elder Ramlab and myself, we do carpentry, all right? And part of the job is to, we do walls. You know, you, you take the joint compound, you put it over the wall, you sand it down, then you paint it. Done deal. I'm looking at, they got these big gaping holes, man, which, which some, uh, you know, whoever did the carpentry, you know, the, 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 you could see the seams in the wall. It looks really tacky, man, like Yashwan's favorite word. You're tacky, tacky. It looks very tacky, man. And you call this your glorified palace? That school that you boast about all the time? They That's, call it progress. Yeah, you call it progress. Yeah. You brothers will see that. And those of you brothers that do carpentry, get ready to have a good laugh. All right? We've got the boxes all exposed, the wires are all exposed. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Anyway, let's go to this uh, thing here. Shall your brothers go to war and you sit your behind here? That's the most insane. you got to correlate that with many of us today. you got some brothers in the war. In this fight, all the brothers are sitting back. I'll wait for brothers to beg me to do something for this truth. We ain't begging you to do nothing. Okay, let's stop right there. Now he's saying you got brothers in this work and you got other brothers sitting back. Well, my question to you, Nate, is what are you doing? Are you in the work? Or are you sitting back counting that money? Count or count de Monet. <laughs> right? Count de Monet. Pimp. That's what you used to say about your shy. You used to call your shy Count de Monet. Yeah. Well, nigga, you the new Count de, de Monet. Monet. <laughs> the Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> Does he hear that? Well, I keep. Hey, hey. Well, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, speak. <laughs> hey, I should look that up, man. The Scarlet Pimpernel. <laughs> Yeah, so um, basically, you know, um, you, what you're seeing is you're seeing the the uh, the, uh, the the BS that that Nate is uh, pushing out there. You know, this subterranean uh, jungle layer. You know, subterranean den of Yep, yep. Because you know, the bottom line is, you know, the guy causes a bunch of bums. But look, look at the place that they got the so-called worship. You mean to tell me all them different camps, and they mentioned they have people up in Canada and different other places you mean to tell me all that money you get and you couldn't get a better place than that you know because you know where that money's going that money's going straight in your pocket Nate you, you got some you know, boy? alright so uh, this is uh, Micah chapter 3 and um, I'll start at verse uh, uh, 10 um, this is speaking about you, Nate. It says, they build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. You know, because basically by you withholding the name of the Mosai and his son from these people, basically what you're doing is you 
setting them up for, for the day of destruction. Because the scriptures say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and it's safe. If you don't have the name of the Most High, you go, you're not going to make it. It says, the heads thereof judge for reward and the priests thereof teach for hire. And that's what you're doing, Nate. That's what you got all, you know, you, you know that just teaching the word ain't, isn't going to be enough. That's what you got, uh, burgers and fringes. You know, you got these guys making these videos about, you know, cooking burgers and, you know, and, 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 and uh, coming together, which is not wrong.